Hi everybody, it's me, Waffle Dog, coming at you again with another World of Tanks tank review. This time we're looking at a premium tank destroyer that recently went on sale and will be for about 12 days longer, the M56 Scorpion. The M56 Scorpion is a tier 7 US elite, obviously, tank destroyer, which does not get premium matchmaking despite its hits a full armor. 1-1-1 armor. I've never seen a tank with that bad of armor. And honestly, it's somewhat lackluster gun. Obviously, for a tier 7, this is decent. 219 pen and pay to win heat rounds of 275 pen. That's more than you have in, DP, in uh, alpha damage. And you do get a decent rate of fire. But I think the, lot, the question that comes to a lot of people's minds when they see this is why well, have this in your garage if you already have E25? And that's not a question I can really come up with an answer to. E25 is probably one of my more favorite tanks. I do like to spam my premiums so I can keep them credits high, keep them rolling in. And the E25 is probably the most powerful one that's a bit, that has been available for sale recently, Type 59. Kind of excluded because I don't really know how powerful it actually is these days. And this thing is honestly ridiculous. The DPM of this thing is 2,700 average DPM with some great gun, uh, gun depression, handling, etc, etc. Insane camo values, and unlike the Scorpion, not every single HE round in the game can penetrate you, and you can get some hilarious top tier bounces off of your tank when you're cresting hills and people are shooting at you in the gun melee. But that's not what this video is about. We're talking about the Scorpion here. I have somewhat limited experience in this tank, but I think I know way more than enough to really talk about it in detail. So before we hop over to Tank Inspector and take a look at kind of the side-by-side -side of this and a couple other tanks. Let's look at some basic stats here in the garage and just kind of examine the tank. First thing you notice is it is a cool looking tank and this is the reason I picked it up is because it's very aesthetically pleasing. It's just a gun on tracks basically. That's all it is. It's just a gun. And I think that's really neat. It's something that's unique and as more of a collector than anything else. I love it. I think it's just great. However, Having one hull armor everywhere, namely right here on this gun shield, means that your gun gets damaged about every single shot that you take anywhere in this area. If you're getting shot here, your gun's probably getting damaged in the M56 Scorpion. Other than that, it's not really as fast as you'd like it to be. A 45 kilometers per hour top speed limit in a tank this tiny and really paper thin. You expect it to have a really fast top speed like the C25 here and you expect it to really, you know, reach it quickly and whatnot. But it doesn't do that. It's kind of sluggish, honestly. It feels more like you're driving around something like, uh, what's it feel familiar to? Kind of like a Pershing almost in terms of speed, which the Pershing's not a slow tank, but it's not a fast tank, and the Pershing has some form of armor. This doesn't, but that's not really what, that's not relevant because that's a totally different tank. This is a tier seven tank destroyer. The value for the bundle was decent last time I checked. We'll go over that next before we go to the garage and yeah i think that is about everything else i wanted to say about this tank its dpm as you can see is very lackluster almost a thousand less than e25 so let's hop over to the premium store first to take a look at the value that you're getting for this tank and then we'll head over to tank inspector to compare it to some other tier 7 premium and non-premium tank destroyers all right so as you guys can see we are now in the World of Tanks gift shop here, and we're taking a look at the M56 Scorpion. So we can see it's $40 for sale, and you get a free garage slot, obviously, with the tank, as well as 3,500 gold. I really don't like how they're trying to bundle pretty much every single tank here, excluding the TOG, the um, M4A1 Revolver, M4A1, whatever you want to call it. Um, I really don't like how they're bundling all of them with gold. Now, I do think you do get a better gold value out of this if you consider the price the tank was released at. However, looking at this offer, I can't recommend that anyone spends $40 because that's a decent chunk of money for m the majority of people I know where I live anyways and basically pretty much everywhere. You know, that's, that's, not, that's no joke for a tank that's, as we're going to find out, pretty unimpressive. Maybe spend your CVS and Subway and Burger King cards on it rather than looking to spend your own money on it.
drop some gift cards on it for us, possibly if you need the tank that much. But yeah, that's just a general overview of how I feel about the prizing of this tank. Wargaming, of course, they're a company, they want to make money, but still, come on. Anyways, let's go to the uh, tanks.gg and have a look at this tank in comparison to some others. Alright, so we're going to do two kind of comparison things with this M56 Scorpion. First, we're going to compare it to other Tier 7 premium tank destroyers. And I'm sure I've left one out here, but these are the main ones that come to mind when I think of what's a Tier 7 premium tank destroyer. These three stand out to me the most. Right off the bat, Scorpion has the lowest DPM of all these three. E25 gets 1,000 more roughly, where the AT15 does get about 200 extra DPM than the M56 Scorpion. Looking at penetration values, the E25 using that Stug 3 gun obviously is going to have low pen. Scorpion wins out in this easily. It has the best gun of the three in terms of alpha and, P D and uh, pen, but not DPM. And looking at module damage, whatever, rate of fire, we went over that kind of. Um, going down to weapon handling, we can see that the E25 does get the better end of the handling where the Scorpion's kind of in between, but it's still roughly as bad as the AT-15A. As you can see, their values are pretty similar, which is strange because the AT-15A doesn't really move around too much, and the gun handling doesn't feel as bad on that because of it being such a slow vehicle. Then elevation depression values, yeah, whatever. You're not going to be able to use your gun depression in this unless you're in a really cheeky camping spot behind a hill where you can use camouflage to your advantage to kind of get into those weird locations. Other, you're not going to use it to go hold down in this thing. Hold down is like, here, shoot this part of my paper armor. It's senseless. So movement, obviously, E25 is the fastest these three, and AT-15 is the slowest with the Scorpion. Once again, middle of the pack. It seems to kind of be middle of the pack on most things, aside from the DPM, which is really, ah, it's really a crutch. And here we can see on the Tanks UG site that it says there's no hull armor on the rear and sides of this vehicle, which is awful. And of course, the saving grace of the AT-15A is that it is kind of a tier 7 AT-15 with a very bad gun, and I believe it is also slightly slower. It also benefits from more health than the other two smaller, more nimble tanks. And view range, well, view Wargaming nerfed all the TDs view range, except for premium ones, I believe. So I think that these are the stock values, if I'm wrong about, or the previous pre-nerf, pre-TD nerf values. If I'm wrong about that, someone please correct me. And that's pretty much all there is to go over. As you can see, the Scorpion's in the middle of the pack on most things, aside from DPM, where it's severely lacking. So now let's go ahead and compare it to some standard Tier 7 tank destroyers. Alright, so here we are comparing the M56 Scorpion to some more standard Tier 7 tank destroyers, which I think are most similar to it in playstyle. They're all decently rapid, they all have a more fast-firing gun, and they all are, well, basically that. They're just the faster tank destroyers that tend to have more punchy weapons, you know, with higher DPM. And right off the bat, you can see Scorpion, once again, lowest of the pack, but highest of the pack in penetration. Not damage though this time. This time it is the T25 AT, which is actually a surprisingly good tier 7 tank destroyer. It's pretty nimble. It's I believe it is a T20 hull with a modification to it to where it is modified to having a tank destroyer type layout on the hull rather than a turret like the T20 would have. So it's pretty nimble. SC100 M1, everyone knows that thing is nimble. The Challenger, it's a Comet, so it's kind of fast, but turret makes it feel so slow, the turret traversing that thing. Rate of fire goes to the Challenger with uh, it's extremely fast firing. I do, I do believe it's a 20 pounder gun, but the other guns, this one especially on the SU, is similar. Um, weapon handling, surprisingly actually, goes to the um, SU 101 on everything except for depression, which this line until you get to like tier 9 uh, having those turrets mounted like all the way at the back of the tank is really painful because you have the shittiest depression ever. All the gun handling, though, is decent for the most part, except for this tank. Don't let these stats fool you. The Challenger is an awful tank with awful gun handling. You will feel useless in this potato of a tank. Anyways, movement. Um, sadly, the tank with the least armor. Here we can see the armor values. These are all kind of in the same range, which is why I picked them. Found Challenger, for some reason, having 200 rear turret armor on one little spot, like this fuck you plate on the back of the turret. Don't know what that's about. But 
it's really sad seeing how we're going to put this tank in the game. It's seven tons. They couldn't, like, maybe it's realistic to have that 200 horsepower engine in there. It's, this is pathetic. This is pathetic how it's so, so slow. Power to weight is good, but honestly, it doesn't feel like it. And you'll see that in the gameplay. I'm going to show you in a second. So that's all I really wanted to highlight here in the uh, tanks.gg analysis section of this video. So let's move on to the most decent game I've been able to have in the Scorpion so far, where I think I can demonstrate some of its strengths and weaknesses to you all. Alright, so here we are in the M56 Scorpion in an actual match. We can see this is a Malinovka standard battle. Tier 7 maximum, so it's really good matchmaking for the Scorpion, which can see tier 9s, and trust me, this tank really does not like to see tier 9s. So, we're going to take a quick second here and a little screenshot for ourselves. Just a screenshot for ourselves for later. And what we're going to do here is abuse the camo rating and camo net, which I have equipped here. Try and get some early shots in. Now, some of you may be wondering why I have changed my mod pack so much recently. Uh, I just have trouble finding something I'm comfortable on. Here you can see me using the camo mechanics of World of Tanks to my advantage. Pulling behind the bush so it's no longer it. Visi um, invisible, kind of, you know. I forget which word it's take or clear, whatever. You know what I mean. So it's no longer see throughable. So I can shoot. I can shoot without being spotted back. Do the same thing to this ARL here, or try to anyways. No shots. But anyways, yeah. I can't really get comfortable on a single configuration. I know I like Aslan's mod pack the most because it's so easy to customize the installer. However. I can't really get comfortable on one specific one, but I think this is perfect for me right now, the way I've got it. I finally got the actual win 8 values being presented here for you all, so that's good. Um, gives you a more accurate representation of the skill of everyone, in my opinion. And we're going to start shooting up some more targets here. we got a Black Prince, we got side Enemy is hit. Nail him, I believe, right through the track there, and he is just getting chewed up. I don't know what this guy is doing, honestly. He's the greatest player, so probably attribute this to inexperience. Sad days, sad days indeed. Black Prince is a decent tank, but not in the middle of the blue field on my own. Okay. I don't think we've been spotted this game yet due to me having my uh, decently trained T110E4 crew in here. So, we're looking pretty good so far. We've already done a couple shots of damage, but really nothing special yet. We've been very timid on this eastern flank, and that's going to prove to bite us in the butt later on. You know, another shot, or my first shot is the ARL there, and I'm going to keep on trying to get more into him before he dies. Gotcha. You can see the rate of fire on this tank really leaves a lot to be desired. The gun sure has great pen, sure it's really punchy for tier 7. However, it just doesn't feel like enough. It really doesn't. It feels like you should have some kind of Vorsig tier gun on this thing due to its total lack of armor and relatively lackluster movement around the map. So now what's going through my head is I'm thinking, there's no more shots to be had over here. And I'm just trying to see what the gun elevation on this tank is like. Being very disappointed, that's kind of the theme, the disappointment of this tank. So we're going to go and look to get into a decent position over here. And that's really bad, we just lost our KV-3, one of our only two tier 7 heavies. Which should really help us secure that hill a bit. Not in the cards today, it seems. I'm gonna go over here to his Jag Panther and for some reason GK361 HR. Because they're in a pretty good spot. And before I do that, I just wanna look for some shots on these two tier, tier 6 heavies that have just been spotted. And I might get them, but I think I'm asking about the higher elevation to really get the shots. But yeah, this is a decent spot for TDs, especially ones with great camera value, such as this. That's really. The only way you can make this tank work is, obviously, you use your teammates as your armor. You can range positions like this where you won't be spotted, let the other people soak up the shots for you while you pump out the damage to this gun. And really, you just gotta abuse the way cannon and cannon work. Wargaming has made it a lot harder over the past um, year or two, I've found, in terms of uh, more campy t uh, tank destroyer style, more passive play style, which is really something that suited me a lot. Like, I I am an aggressive player unless I'm playing in these kind of tanks, and honestly, I feel more comfortable in tanks like this, or the Vorsig, 
or maybe even an E25 that kind of can really play far back and like abuse that mechanic of camouflage to their fullest ability. But they seem to be phasing out all the bushy spots, all the camp spots. Like Redshire is a shadow of its former self. It's way more brawler than it used to be, so it really is an issue for tanks like this. Which half the time see maps that they can't really perform on at all. But I got lucky this match. Anyways, we've racked up a thousand damage so far, which really is not that impressive in this tank. That's only about probably something like well, a thousand is like four shots from this gun, but we've hit six. Doing a little bit of passing here and there. About the Cromwell on the hill, look for a shot, but he dips back down, I do believe, before I can get something on him, sadly. Yeah. I'm having trouble finding a shot. It's really thin and it just goes and hits the hill. This is their best player though, their VK3001H, and while he is only bottom tier, he can't be a problem, so I'm going to try and get some shots into him. I'm trusting here that his range is worse enough, or bad enough, to where I will be able to um, abuse both my camouflage net and my relatively powerful camo rating to not get spotted as I fire there without concealment, without proper concealment I should say. So anyways, this is really looking bleak for us. I've got an OI experimental that's just kind of, I call it the O. OI, it's the OI obviously. But that's just kind of back there, and this is a disaster for Scorpion. You never want to see this little blip appear ever. Immediately I duck behind cover because there are two artillery on their team that could either one shot me or two shot me, depending on which one shoots. The FB can two shot me. He'll pin every single time he hits me with his gun. He doesn't get eaten over track somehow, and the Crusader. I do believe that if he rolls well, he's going to one-shot me. Machiri is also pretty dangerous with his burst cannon thing he has. It's kind of an awkward gun, but he can do some damage. Really, I've probably played too passively. I probably should have switched positions to this eastern front flank earlier so that I could get um, more damage in people like this KV-1 or other tanks like Cromwell earlier. That just wasn't the case this game, so you can see here the gun handling as I'm using the gun depression of the tank to kind of crest this ridge line and shoot this KV-1 on the side. I really count on that one hitting, and here we can see when you get hit in this tank, your gun gets damaged. I repair it immediately, foolishly. First shot on the OI, experimental, and miss. Thankfully the KV-1 gets taken out by artillery, and I really got to give it to these two artillery players. There's one artillery player now. All stars. They did so good in this kind of final last stand we had over here. Moving back because I want to use this artillery as a shield. He's going to stop people for me that I, so that I can shoot them rather than it being the other way around. Because frankly, I'm sure he's had a decent game, but I'm, I was pretty desperate to get a good game in this tank as quickly as possible because I despise playing it, honestly. Well, I shouldn't say that because it's fun to play. It's just not something I want to grind on. Nail shot into the VK. I'm assuming the M12 artillery hit him as well. But I'm not sure. He doesn't get spotted there. Or he does not spot me there due to all the concealment between us. And you can see there, them commenting. And this is disaster. I'm pretty much dead at this point. Got Shiri shooting me. No one's going to um, use me. I was going to say no one's going to bounce, but somehow their OI experimental from behind managed to bounce off me. I have no clue how that happened. We got one more into the cheery before we can't we see if he damages our gun again. These are not like super high caliber guns shooting at us either and damaging us. This is a cheery gun. It's not a very large caliber at all and it's just able to knock that gun out and ease. That's the that's the end of that very disappointing game. Also, my best game in the Scorpion. So let's go have a look at the post-game statistics. Alright, so now we're looking at the um, post-game statistics for this defeat on Mount Opka in my Scorpion. Sorting by experience earned, we were at the top of our team, I do believe. Nope, second on the team, because our Yag Panther played a hell of a game. Seeing every single one of his shots that he did hit, or penetrating, excuse me, every single one of his shots that he did hit for an excellent result. And there's me doing 2,800 damage and 2,100 spotting damage. Something to note here is that was only a second class master badge, which does make you think, wow, maybe this tank is being played really well. And possibly it is, but on the other hand, it makes me think that maybe if this was a victory, 
Or wait, no, actually I did get the victory experience because I was the top something on the amateur experience, so that's irrelevant. Anyways, does mean that people are playing this tank pretty well. However, I don't know. I'm just, I'm very unsure about this tank and whether it's worth your time or not. I did make a buttload of credits though, as you can see, and I was top tier. It's not like I was shooting at higher tier targets necessarily. So that just goes to show what a great money maker this tank can be. I do believe that those um, standard rounds with the 219 penetration are pretty inexpensive. So if you're only firing that and only really using one or two consumables, this thing is going to print credits for you if you keep on using that gun and creating results like this. So if you um, were in the market for something like an E25, but miss the sale for it, this is not the tank for you at all. This is not an E25 by any stretch of the imagination. Nothing will ever be as good as that tank in terms of the role that it fulfills, the kind of unique tank it is, basically. However, if you do want US TD tra crew trainer that has enough crew slots to fill to um, train some crew, but not every single one of them possibly, that absolutely prints credits. This might just be a tank for you if you do not mind it being slower than it should be, having way less DPM than it really honestly fairly should, and having nothing for armor. So if you can play this tank to its advantage, to um, its strengths, this kind of goes for most tanks, but more the... Um, less room for error of tanks like this, but if you can play these tanks to their strengths, you'll get really fantastic results time in and time time out as long as you don't get shitty maps like Winterberg and Rubbleberg and Fireberg every other time. As long as you're not getting those bad map rotations, you're gonna make mad credits in this tank, but I don't know if I can condone it for the price. And that's my final thoughts on this Scorpion. If you have enjoyed this kind of is it worth the buy tank review? Please leave a like and leave comments more than that's the thing I need the most. I'm looking for comments to try and improve on this as much as I can. So please leave me your feedback. I want as much con constructive criticism as I can get on these videos so I can make them um, better for the viewers because that's what this is all about. All right. I hope you all have a good day. Bye.